I've talked a lot before about how the choice of performance metric is a critical part of the backtesting and optimization process. But in the previous episode, I stated how I'd never undertaken a structured research study to quantifiably determine which metric or metrics work best until now. So in today's episode, I take up where I left off last time and provide you with the final conclusions and findings from that study. And I have to say, I found some of them quite surprising. So stay tuned. But now I want to get straight into where the research study took me to next and provide you with my final conclusions and findings. But can I just first make the same request I made last time? So many people provide really great feedback about how valuable they find these tutorials, but they're also very surprised at how few viewers they have, maybe five or 600 views for each video. And so my request to you is to help me get viewer numbers up significantly if we can, but I can only do that with your help. I need you to share links to the videos you've got most value from, either on the forums that you actively engage with or on your social media channels. And if you could do that for me and help increase my followers, I can't say how grateful I would be. And it's that increase in viewers that will ensure I'm able to continue producing this kind of content for you. Okay, so with that said, let's get on with the findings. Now, the thing last time that made me realize simply looking at the correlation of a metric between the optimization and the walk forward wasn't the best way of doing this was when I did this for maximum drawdown. So as you know, maximum drawdown is a risk-based factor, which doesn't incorporate any component of reward at all. And so the fact that the maximum drawdown has a great correlation with an R squared here of 0.78 is neither here nor there in terms of predictability for our system. And so clearly this is not the way to identify the best performance metric. But after a lot of thinking and deliberation, I believe I came up with a method that does give us that ability. It was the realization that I had to measure the metric compared to a desirable outcome that was the actual breakthrough. And the most desirable outcome, in my view, was an equity curve in the walk forward out of sample phase that was growing and growing in a steady manner with the minimal amount of drawdown. So in other words, the R value. And by measuring each of the metrics against that means that we're comparing each of them with the same value, a value that is indicative of what we're actually trying to achieve, a steadily increasing equity curve. And another moment of realization I had is that it's actually the ranking of the performance metric values that is important because it's that ranking that will lead to us choosing the different values. And that also is a natural way of removing outliers from the correlation. So all will become clear if I talk you through the process that I took. So again, we're going to create a pivot table of our data. And here, for every performance metric that we look at, we're going to look at how smooth that equity curve is in the walk forward phase, which of course is the R value. So now we can go back to our optimization values and start to look at the relationship. So let's start with CAGR over maximum drawdown. And remember here, it's the ranking that we're interested in, because that's what we'll make our choice of parameter values based on. And also it removes those outliers from the calculations. And so to do that, 
we say that we want to show our values based on a ranking of smallest to largest. So the smallest rankings here, so one for example, is based on the worst performing walk forward equity curve. And as chance would have it, the worst performing in sample metric did actually produce the worst performing forward. And as these values eventually get better and better, we can see that the ranking also increases, meaning that the walk forward results of the equity curve are also getting better. So now we can simply plot this on a chart. And so just to reiterate, the values along the x-axis here are the values that were produced by the compound annual growth rate over maximum drawdown performance metric. And on the y value, we have the rankings from 63, because there were 63 sets of parameters, down to 1, with 1 being the worst forward equity curve and the top values here being the best. And now we have the data we need in order to make our decision. So again, we can add a trend line. We'll just make that a different color to make it a little clearer. And so now remember this is for compound annual growth rate over maximum drawdown we have a ranking correlation of 0.7 now you'll remember previously the factor that made me realize just simply doing a correlation of the performance metric itself wasn't going to give us what we wanted was when i did that for maximum drawdown and so i'm going to repeat that now to see what kind of results we get and I'm going to create a new pivot chart for this so that we can view them side by side. So again, remember for our measure, we will use the same R value from the walk forward. But this time we're going to use the optimization maximum drawdown measure. And again, in the same way we did before, We'll show those values using a ranking basis. So what we can see here is that the best walk forward equity curves are obtained when we get the smallest level of drawdown in our optimization phase which is clearly what you would expect. But now let's use R squared to indicate how predictive this is of a good equity curve. And so here again, we add our trend line. Just make that a little clearer. So whereas using the previous mechanism, the correlation was actually the best for maximum drawdown, here it no longer performs the best. And if we compare this to the value that we had with our compound annual growth rate over maximum drawdown of 0.7, we now achieve a significantly smaller value of 0.57. So this is now something that I feel much more comfortable with because we're measuring each of the metrics against our ultimate objective, which is a smooth, upwardly rising equity curve indicated by the R value we've used. So this approach that I've outlined here, I believe is a robust way of measuring the effectiveness of each performance metric. And I've done this for all of the metrics within the scope of the research study. And so finally, I have the conclusion of which metrics perform best. And so to see that, click top right now to go to the next part.